So this is probably hopefully going to be the last or the second last part of the video um, because uh, I messed up and accidentally deleted the, these parts because I thought I had already um, downloaded them onto my laptop apart from they hadn't so yeah deleted them in real life um, so anyway um, so I'm this part um, is going to start off with the footwear and um, other things so start off with these are the gaiters um, that um, well there, there are several types of ga gaiters that were worn by the British during the Second World War uh, these however are the two main types that you'll probably see so um, the first type is the early war pattern um, this is donated by the fact that it has um, brass uh, tips at the end here to stop it from fraying and then there's that was introduced in 1938 um, and so technically these aren't patent 37 gauges but in all intents and purposes uh, for collectors they are um, and this is the later war variant and you can tell that because it has not got the uh, metal um, parts at the end um, so it's kind of just skimping and saving um, really uh, and these were introduced around about 1940 1941 um, so yeah um, now it, uh, it's not skimping and saving on these because they're different sizes this is a small size um, size 2 these are and these I believe are 19 um, 1940 dated there yeah, uh, and it's kind of quite badly faded but yeah they were my first pair of gaiters they don't fit and they didn't really fit when I got them which was a bit of a shame so yeah here's the second bear and these are size 3 gaiters so they're bigger and these are 1941 dated you can't really see it that well there but you can see it better there um, so Yep, and the back kind of just stayed the same style. So, yep, that's the gaiters. Um, and the whole point of them was to uh, stop your laces from uh, getting uh, undone and you tripping over them um, or getting tangled, and your trousers from getting tangled and stuff and being ripped. Um, so, yep, I'll now transition to. Uh, the boots. So here are the, the boots, the standard boots of the British soldier during the Second World War were known as ammunition boots um, and these were used I believe from about the mid 1800s, I think it was the 1870s um, right through until the present day um, apart from these are uh, not used by combat groups now, they're used by guards units uh, the, the Grenadier Guards and um, the, the other Guards regiments. Uh, so, yep, and these are ex Guards boots because, um, as you can see, they look reasonably shiny and also you can do that. And that is basically because it's so hard. I mean, look at that really hard to kind of depress anything on it and the reason for that is because the guards they beeswax their boots and then they melt the beeswax um, on their boots so it, it impregnates their leather and makes it very 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 tough so yeah, these are in reasonably good condition for guards boots because the ones that I usually see are, are literally like trying to put wooden boots on um, so yeah I mean that's that uh, they would have 12 hob nails on the sole uh, like this however I'm missing two here and this one's kind of yeah so and they have a, a heel cap and a toe cap as well Stupid lace wants to go away. 
Um, there's a size 11 L. Um, now I believe these are original World War II, if they're not in the 1950s. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that they're basically almost identical to German ankle boots. Um, so yeah, they're, they're identical to German ankle boots. Here's my second one. Um, this one has lost almost all of its um, hobnails to use, which is a real shame. Um, yeah, I bet you that they're all probably all over the fields of where I've been reenacting. Um, yeah, I'm planning on trying to find a new pair soon because it's a bit disgusting that I'm going around with one shoe, one boot that's got hobnails and one that doesn't. Um, so yeah, this one doesn't have the size on, but they they are the same size. Then there's the heel plate again. So yeah, I mean that's really that for the boots. Now I will transition to wearing them and um, with the gaiters. So this is how they're usually seen um, nowadays. They'll be worn by the guards um, without gaiters. Um, so yeah, um, I just thought I'd say that I've also seen um, a German uh, soldier that was, um, I believe he was captured and he was wearing armor boots, even though it says he's wearing, um, the guy who wrote it says he, he's wearing um, German mountain troops boots, uh, that's BS because the guy, I'm assuming he's probably about 50 so his eyesight's not that good. Um, and um, he thinks that he can see there's the hooks coming over the sides here, 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 um, but they're just bits of mud. They're definitely, definitely, definitely not um, the hooks for the um, German mountain boots. So, yeah, these would have also been um, issued to the Germans because they were literally the same and they would have captured loads and loads of them at Dunkirk and I can't imagine them just letting them lay there and rot because the Germans didn't do that um, so yeah now onto them with gaiters how they'd be worn properly by the so guys this is what they'd look like um, with the gaiters on so yeah now the way the gaiters were supposed to be worn is with the straps on the outside pointing backwards like this. Now when I first started off it was very, rather difficult to get this kind of worked out. But so yeah. And what you meant to do also is have the top of the trousers tucked in there, but to have it kind of billowing over the top. I don't know how well you can see this. So it looks a bit like that and then you have it tucked in like that. So then it looks quite nice that it's meant to kind of bulge you out. This one's slightly better. And then it goes over the top of your ammo boot, like so, and covers over the laces. So, I mean, that's the ammo boots. So it's rather, rather badly filmed, but yeah. So, moving on to the proper uniform. So, this is something that I forgot to show with my pack contents. Um, well basically, what it is, is um, an ammunition box. So, uh, this is the type that will be um, issued in big packs, and what it basically consists of is a little round um, that will be stacked up. You can see where they've been for a long time. You can see the date on one of those, uh, or some of them. It's 41 there, I think. There's 42 there. And basically, they, they'll just be sitting in there, and then you would open this up when you've got loose supplies of ammunition. Pull, up, pull out all the ammo and stick it into your ammunition pouches, and you're ready to go. So, these are, I believe are Canadian, I'm not sure, um, and they'll be held together here and then you'll take out your jackknife and just go and cut along there as well. And 
So yeah, that's that. Um, now, don't know how how well I'm going to show you this, but it's got a date here. You really need to get the light right to be able to see it. I can't really see it myself. Oh, just try with it. Bright light. One night while on his beat, a couple he did meet, they were cuddling in a shelter anyhow. He said the old player's gone, you see, and the chap said, 41 actually. Telling me, Cause Mr. Woo's an air raid warden now. Yeah, so, there it is. Um, number one, it says, uh, it's Mark something. C, S, E, and then 41. Which is today. So, yeah, and there's a whole lot of other writing there. Um, His cousin one way in, says, one day was helping him to move Canadian a cartridge packet, that's it. I'm um, sorry. So, yeah, that's basically that. Um, now I'm going to go off that. Um, I, I just thought I'd mention it because I have it this original. So, yeah, and you'll, you'll just have that in your pack. But, um, because it would just be spam and it would be very useful in case you got into a, like um, a position where you were surrounded and cut off um, and forced to fight your way out um, or you had to hold and defend a position um, lots more ammunition would be very useful or if it, even if it just a, a box like this would be very welcome if you were running low on ammo so yeah that's basically that and that would be if it hadn't already been ripped open and all the ammunition stuffed into ammunition pouches, it would be carried probably in a pack or it would be in its um, in a box with a whole load of others. So that's that. Moving on to the rest of my kit. <laughs>